It's been a few days since I made a video describing the experiment we're working on uh, in the pursuit of heating the greenhouse here that's attached to our home with a compost pile right outside and using either passive or active circulation of water to extract the heat from that. And so I'd like to share some notes now that I've made some updates and get some more feedback from folks. So stick around. One thing I want to say right off the bat, when that video came out and I asked for some input from folks around ways to improve the design and feedback on the design as it stood, uh, it was really a great reminder of how amazing this community is that we are all a part of. I really appreciate all of you commenting so many thoughtful uh, ideas and suggestions and input, some of which, a lot of which, I've tried to include in this new iteration. Uh, so thank you so much for being part of this community and those of you that have been contributing through comments and those of you that are, that are watching. Um, I want to address, there were some themes in the feedback that I got that I did not include, but I want to acknowledge them and explain why it is that I thought about them and that I appreciate them, but that they didn't work out. One a common theme was why not just bring the compost into the greenhouse? I love the idea as far as simplicity goes. I think if we had a high tunnel, a slightly larger high tunnel out in the landscape, that would be a great fit. In this case, this space is coupled directly to our home. And so all of the aromas, the compounds, the moisture coming off of an active compost pile would be potentially very problematic for us in our home. Otherwise, I think it's a great idea. The other suggestion that came through as a theme was, why not take this water and if I would like it to be passively thermosiphoned, and I've learned a lot about thermosiphoning since that first video, uh, in the spirit of having that, if this water, the bottom of it, began at a level above the circuit of the water going through the compost, it would be able to passively uh, do this on its own. Again, really smart concept. The challenge for me is in the execution in this context of taking this much weight and bringing it this high up next to windows, next to glass with cats around. It felt like the safe thing for now was to leave this container where it was. Um, but really great ideas and something for me to consider in the future. The aspects that were a common theme in feedback that I did incorporate, number one, I went to a local hardware store. The guy there spent tons of time with me and explained to him what I was trying to do and walk to end up walking away with 200 feet of PEX tubing. So that was one of the themes is increase the length of the tubing that's running through the pile and decrease the diameter. If you remember from the last video, it was a shorter length of tube that was a thicker tube. The other thing that people suggested as a theme was reduce the rate of flow. I was using a bilge pump, which sent that water through 500 gallons an hour, very high rate of speed. So there wasn't enough time for the water to pass through and accumulate or draw the heat off of the compost and send it back. So I've tried to address both of those in this. Um, in the compost pile itself, I disassembled the first pile, set all those materials aside. It was an opportunity to turn that pile. And the, some of the updates that I've done with that is we, uh, Sasha and I went and bought some mulch hay from some wonderful, funky people in our neighborhood, uh, $2.50 a bale. So now this pile has, it's framed in hay bales, which adds a really intense layer of insulation. Um, the PEC circuit is run in a much looser and upward spiraling track through the compost. Rather than being centered in the pile in a tight loop, it's more diffusely spaced out, so there's more interaction. And then I went ahead in this case and to minimize the amount of off-gassing or environmental pollutants, capped it with a thick layer of uh, freshly made charcoal from our wood stove added some super nutrient, which you can guess what that might be, um, and then put plastic, uh, old greenhouse plastic, over the compost with insulation on top to keep the heat in, keep the moisture in, and to make it so the volatile gases can't just escape into the environment, but rather into this experimental track, which I'll show in a moment. And so now we're at a state where this little pump 
The bummer is, I first set this up the other day down low here. This is a $20 pump that was rated to work uh, to negative 40 centigrade up to 100 centigrade, but I think that is uh, presupposing working. And it sat when it froze overnight and the front cracked off, so I'll have to get another replacement. But it still works submerged in the water. I think what I'm learning that I'll need to do is figure out a way to connect this directly to a power line rather than a solar panel so that we can get 24-7 uh, movement. But now, if I plug this in, it's a much slower rate of flow through a much, much longer circuit. And this water is coming out. It takes a moment or two. This morning when we came out here, and the air in here was well below freezing, there was a huge amount of steam coming off. And so now it's run for a moment or two and we're seeing ambient water is around 47, 48, and it's coming out 91, uh, 87. It's bouncing around, let's say it's 88. So quite a difference. And it runs at that temperature for quite a long time now because of the longer circuit. Um, so we're starting to get a little bit better in drawing more heat off the compost into this water. I went ahead and added, I drilled a small hole in the side of the tank and ran an old hose through it. And that hose now goes through our raised garden beds with a bunch of pinholes pricked through them. Uh, since this tank takes on rainwater from our tank outside, um, anytime that rainwater is coming in, now it can overflow and go through these beds. And so as the water goes through the compost, draws heat off and into the water, and then is circulated into these beds, it's dripping warm water into our actual production beds. That part it's doing passively. And the next step with this whole process will be to take the compost, which is now capped with poly and insulated. I made a very rough sketch of a capture hood. So now we're drawing the hot water off of the pile. And my goal is to also draw the hot air off of the pile. And so this is again where I'd love to get some feedback from folks. We've got these tubes that were buried initially under the soil. They run across the entire length of these of this one big bed and to those stacks on the far side are the risers. And what I'd like to do is associate with each of those tubes. Hey Stanley, what's going on champion? <laughs> Moderately interested in the composting process. Um, to p make some sort of cap for this that will hold the hot air. You can see all the steam and moisture that's forming. That the compost, because it's insulated from the outside, is now radiating moist heat into the greenhouse. And so what I need to think through is some way to cap this space. And do I either apply a fan at each of these points, forcing the air down through the tubes, or do I mount the fans on the risers on the far end, drawing the heat up through the tubes? In other words, do I pull from the far side or push on the inside? Sasha and I just recently went to a 90-year-old guy's uh, spot and bought insulated, rigid uh, poly, polygal, polycarbonate sheets that I plan to make an insulated airtight box over this. Um, so that all of the heat can be drawn off. And we plan to insulate this tank against the windows in the back, but maybe we can actually use the air to draw that heat and moisture down through here as well. It feels like an opportunity to draw out excess moisture, warmth, and nutrient, ammonia or methane that may be in the air from this, and to have it precipitate down into these drainage tubes in the soil so that the plants can scrub that excess nutrient out. And I've added these mesh on top so we don't drop soil in there and so rodents can't go down in there. Whew. Long update. 
I'm gonna guess for a lot of you that aren't into greenhouses or uh, heating systems and things like that, this was a pretty boring video. For those of you that are into this, hopefully it was an interesting update on where we are on things. I would like to evolve this whole system further and further. Any of the bits you've seen in this that are off to you or could be improved, let me know. I'm really open to this feedback. I'm really enjoying the dialogue with everyone as well. Uh, and we'll share notes on the feedback we get and how we adapt it to be able to pull not only the, the heat from the pile into water and into the soil, but also to pull nutrient, moisture, and warmth from the air heated by this pile down and into the soil as well. Thanks so much for being part of this and let me know what you think, what seems good about it, and what seems really dumb about it. Thanks for watching.